workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord. Do good, so shall you dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord. They'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him. He will bring it to pass. You and he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as noon's day. Verse number seven. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him. O prospereth in his way because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. We are spending time on the dynamic of remaining vibrant. The dynamics of remaining vibrant. How to be vibrant in your prayers. How to remain vibrant in your prayers. The Bible tells us in verse number one, fret not yourself because of evil doers. Do not be bothered. Do not be surprised. Do not even consider and time yourself with the people who are working iniquity. They will soon be cut down like grass, and they will be destroyed like somebody who was cutting grass out there in the garden. I love verse number three. Do you have your Bible? Psalm 37, verse number three. Trust in the Lord. Do good. You will dwell in the land, and you shall be fed. Trust in the Lord. Put your total confidence in God. Develop faith in God. Develop strength in scripture. And do good. Whatever you can, seek to pursue the goodness. Hallelujah. Then we are told you will enjoy things that are in the land. Because the Lord will feed you. I am looking forward to experience the blessings of being fed by the Lord. Then verse number four. Delight yourself also in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Here's the secret to prayer. Delight yourself in the Lord. Commit yourself to the Lord. Develop hunger and urgency. Actually, that's where I begin my teaching. Develop hunger and urgency in your petitions to the Lord. Let there be divine hunger. Let there be divine thirst. You want to see God doing things in your life. As you hunger and you see the urgency of it. In other words, you move quickly. Fervency has to do with the passion and the zeal. Fervency has to do with passion and zeal. There is something that you are so passionate about. You can never compromise. Hallelujah. You are so fervent. If you have not done it, then you are not at home. Then you are not saved. You develop a passion. You have heard people say, I am passionate about this. I am passionate about my family. I am passionate about my church. I am passionate 
about my business. And you know when you are passionate, you will deliver results. You'll begin to see God answering your prayers. And then you get so zealous. There is no compromise. Prayer does not require people without a passion. Prayer does not require people who are not zealous with God. Watu ambao hawana mori. Watu ambao hawana hacha. Hawamtafuti mungu. They don't have anything that drives them and pushes them. It's my prayer that God will push you. That God will ignite a fire in you. And that that fire will never die. Amen. That that prayer will never die. To be fervent, it means your heart is burning with love for God. Your heart has been set on fire. The love of God has consumed you. It has surrounded you. It has taken over in your life. You want to be in a place where you will meet and encounter with God. Has this not been a great week? Has this not been a great week? We have walked in the scriptures. We have prayed. We have trusted God. Our hearts are burning with the divine love. God comes topmost in our lives. The presence of Jesus of Nazareth has taken over in our lives. I want more of Jesus. And that's why we sing songs like more about Jesus. More could I know of him. Hallelujah. Burning. The heart is burning. Moyo unachoma. Moyo unahisia. Moyo unatama. Moyo unakiu. You are burning with the love of God. And the love of God has covered you. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. It has covered you. It has covered you. It has overshadowed you. Then, when we talk of being fervent in the spirit, it's a flame of love for us and for his world. We are conscious of what is happening in the world that God has created. You know, you discover a lot of things when you are reading the word. Psalm 141. Verse number 2. Psalm 141. Verse number 2. Okay. Maybe we begin to read from verse 1. Psalm 141. Verse number 1. Lord, I cry to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice. When I cry to you. Lord, I'm crying to you. Do something about my family. Do something about my studies. Do something about my work. Verse number two. Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. You know... You are trusting God. You are going before him in prayer. And your prayer is like a sweet aroma. You know in the Old Testament, the priest is used to have that innocence. The innocence which they waved before the Lord. In the New Testament, we don't practice what was practiced in the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament... Ended 
at the death of Christ, our innocence now at the hands we lift before the Lord. Lift up your hands before him right now and say, Lord, I pray. I worship you. I call out on you. Urgently answer to my cry in Jesus' name. You know, you lift up your hands as the evening sacrifice. You know, they offered the morning sacrifice and then they offered the evening sacrifice. They slaughtered animals. And these animals, when they were burned, the aroma and the scent descended before God. Hallelujah. This is what happens every time you and me pray. Prayer is a sweet perfume. Maombi ni manukato masuri. Ambayo ya nainuka kwake mungu. Oh, hallelujah. There's a quotation I want to give here from Charles Finney. And I begin the quote. A love for God, ready for any sacrifice, ready for any labor, a feel of love for souls is what is a sacrifice. And that's what I quoted from Charles Finney. Finney said when we love God, it's a sacrifice. When we are ready to make any sacrifice, any labor, we will bestow any feeling of love for souls. For souls. You have heard me say again and again, use your phone to invite a friend to the word. The phone makes sense when you use it to win souls. You must be concerned of those who do not know Christ. Andrew Murray says, to give up and to forget yourself for others is sacrifice. To give up, to forget yourself for others. Andrew Murray. And Andrew Murray was a great South African preacher who has written books on prayer, holiness, and walking with the Lord. He has written a book called Toto Surrender. He has written a book, A Surrendered Life. He has written a book with the Christ in the school of prayer. And if you get these books that have been written, there are so many put together. And you'll find this book in the markets, in the bookstores. Complete works of Andrew Murray. They will bless you. Amen. They will bless you. They will stabilize you. Then, the same Andrew Murray says, when we are hungry and thirsty for God and we want to pray, he says, finding joy in living and dying for others as Christ did is true love in prayer. I quote, finding a joy in living and dying for others as Christ did is true love in prayer. Andrew Murray. Now, those statements are very strong, aren't they? Aren't they? How many of us would be ready to die for others? There is this pastor from Rwanda. When people were being killed, you know, they were fighting using ethnicity. You know what he did? He called for people to come into his house. And he put them into his house. Then those people were hunting and trying to kill 
they came. And the pastor was at the door. He said, before you kill anybody in the house, you have to kill me first. You have to kill me first. And you know that's what they did. They killed him at the door of his house. Then they went into the house. They killed everybody who was there. You know they were using machetes. Pregnant women were ripped open and babies came out and the babies were killed. But there was one girl in the bathroom. The Lord hid her. The killers did not find her. I think it is the angel of the Lord who protected her. Okay? She's the one who lived to tell the story. And she has written a book. And the story has gone on around the world of what the pastor did for the people he gave his life for. There was a house on fire. And the mother was so shocked because the son was in the house. And the mama ran in, got the son out. And she suffered a lot of burns. She brought out the son. Mama had to be treated, but the son did not die. Years later, the son has gone to school. He has gotten his university degrees. He's a man placed very high in the society. And the mama comes to visit the son in the city. And the boy tells the mom, your hands look so miserable. Don't come out and shame me. The friends of the young man are there, you know, they're happy, they're chatting, they're talking about their careers, beautiful cars are parked outside there. And the mama comes out of one room, she comes right into the front and greets everybody. And I, the young man is so annoyed, mama took the opportunity to say, my son, I am so burned. I look angry because the house was on fire and I went in to rescue you. And that's why you are alive today. That's love. And you know Christ died for us. He paid the price. How many of us will be ready to pay the price for a brother or for a sister? Prayer Without fervency is no prayer. It is just speaking. It is not praying. I repeat that statement. It's very powerful. Prayer without fervency is no prayer. It is speaking. It's not even praying. That is what Richard Watson, a great man of God in the past, said. Maombi ambayo aina haraka. Si maombi. Iyo ni kusungumza. Iyo siyo kuomba. Prayer comes out of the depth of your heart. Oh, hallelujah. It comes forcing you. And you know, another man of God said, Innocence cannot smell or ascend without fire. Ile manukato ambayo inachomwa haiwezi kupanda bila moto. Our prayers need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Then it can ascend. I want to ask you. You have fire. In your heart. Is there fire in your heart? When you pray, do you pray with a passion? 
Do you pray until your fire sends your innocence to God? You know, fire never burns down. Fire will always burn going up. Lord, set me on fire. Lord, set me on fire. Hallelujah. Another man of God has said, a travailing spirit gives a burdened desire. A travailing spirit will give you a burdened desire. Strong enough to drive away sleep. And it sets your spirit on fire. You begin to wrestle and you begin to prevail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When your spirit is in agony, when your spirit is burdened, your desire becomes great. It is so strong enough, there will be no sleep. There will be no what? You will come to a prayer meeting, you will stick there. You will stay there for a long time. Sleep will not be the thing. It will be driven away. The flames that are coming out of you. Hallelujah. We will send you wrestling. You will become Jacob. Who will engage with a foreigner. And you will fight the whole night. When it is about morning. The angel wants to leave you. will say, I will not leave you until you bless me. I will not leave you until you bless me. That is prevailing prayer. It is prayer in the spirit. It is prayer with power. Hallelujah. It is prayer that is dominating Whatever is around you. A man of God says, this burden, which is a desire, strong enough to drive away sleep, which inflames your spirit, it belongs to wrestling, prevailing prayer. It is the spirit, it's the power, it is the air, it is the food of prayer. It is what such a spirit is supposed to be. Fervence in prayer. That is what, what Adran Chadison a missionary to China said, I want you to look at me. There are some of you here that this week have discovered prevailing prayer. Huh? There are some of you who in your spirit you have caught something that will never leave you. Huh? For many, many, many years to come. Nobody's going to ask you, take one day in a week and fast. Nobody's going to tell you, attend a prayer meeting. Nobody's going to push you to come for an overnight. You could have grown strong enough that you are a prevailing warrior. Hmm? Wilson Mambaleo, who will be with us here on Sunday, he says prayer is not taught. Prayer is learned. You never read about prayer. You will read, but you have to discover prayer by praying. So prayer is all about praying. And you'll pray from your heart. You'll pray from your spirit. It is this week I woke up uh, and you know it is dead in the night and I found I was praying. I started to utter whatever I was praying. It was so strong. I could hear 
That prayer was not normal. It was some deep within. How many of you have had those experiences? Isaiah 64, verse number 7. Isaiah 64, verse number 7. And there is none that called upon your name. There is none that is started up to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid your face from us. Thou hast consumed us because of our iniquities. Do you know what? Sin will stop you from getting to God. And you'll discover very many people are dead spiritually. They are not ready. They are not ready to call on the name of the Lord. And you know the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Again and again you read, Abraham called on the name of the Lord. So and so called the name of the Lord. And they build an altar there. They offer the sacrifice. Be men and women of God who will call upon the Lord. Call the Lord in your youth. Call on the Lord in your age. Have particular beacons where you will say, I called upon the name of the Lord. Huh? I called on God. He made me go through school. I passed my exams. I called upon the Lord. I got my certificates. I called on the Lord. I went to university. I survived Ah, I got a job. I called upon the name of the Lord. He gave me a wife. He gave me a husband. And I'm standing. When we call upon the name of the Lord, we don't come empty-handed. I will not come out empty-handed. I will not come out empty-handed. I will not come out empty-handed. It may take some time, but I'm not going to be empty-handed. I will call on the name of the Lord. You see, when you see names like Ebenezer, Somebody called on the name of the Lord. And the Lord answered him. And the scriptures continue to say. You need to be stirred up. To take hold of God. Stirred up. I like that. Eh? You need to be set on fire. Amen. You need to be ignited. Actually the word is. Ignited for God. Ignited. For God. Ignited for God. Prayer meetings do not require people are silent. You are travailing. You are screaming. You are calling on God. And God will come to your assistance. Otherwise his face is hidden. And it's hidden. And the people are being destroyed because they have not discovered God. But I'm glad we have intercessors here. We have prayer warriors here. We have prayer generals here who have known that they can fight back and bring God into focus in their lives, in their families, their colleges, their schools, and in their society, and so on and so on. Do you know what I'm doing here? He's saving a lot of things. Huh? People hearing me, people watching me, people following me, they will turn out to be good citizens. We need to call on the name of the Lord. We need to strive. We need to get hold of God. You know that word, to get hold of God, it means to arouse oneself, to incite oneself, to awaken yourself spiritually so that you prevail. Stir up yourself. Put yourself on fire. You'll, work, you'll come back a winner. Awaken yourself. Awaken. Awaken yourself. You know, to be fervent in the spirit, it means to have a mighty movement in your soul. A mighty movement in your soul. I am awakened. I have found God. I'm holding on him. 
nimeamushwa nimempata Mungu nimemshikilia sitamwachilia you are a fervent in your prayer life there is a force of prayer resting on you why don't i have some amen huh there is favor and a pass as you call out on him that force and that intensity causes you to be heard kile kilio na ile sauti unayoipasa maneno yanayotoka mungu anakusikia let me give you an example if batmaus did not cry out he would have never been recorded in the gospels huh alikuwa mchavu alikuwa na nguo za matambara watu walikuwa hawamtaki but he discovered he cried out jesus son of david have mercy on me and the bible says jesus stood still the beggar who stopped god you can stop god you can stop are you hearing me? You can stop God. And I repeat, you can stop God. Young person, don't conclude it's over. You can cry out like the blind beggar. Son of David, have mercy on me. There are so many people who stopped Jesus. That Canaanite woman cried out and said, My daughter has a demon. Jesus stopped and answered that. That woman who was taking her son to Kiplombe for a burial, suppose she was in Eldoret. Jesus stopped the funeral procession and the boy came back to life. That can happen to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That can happen to you. Let me tell you. Whatever you have read, go back to it. Read it and read it and read it and read it. Read it, read it. Apply it. Apply it. You discover you are changing. You are different from other people. Cry out to him. Muliri Ebuana. I see people in services, it's like they don't want to be hard crying. The people who cry are the ones that God answers their prayer. Psalm 8, 8, verse number 1. Oh Lord God of my salvation. Everybody say, oh Lord God of my salvation. I have cried day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear. Hear my cry. There is the formula. Cry day and night. Cry day and night. <laughs> you know, Moses told God in Exodus 14 and 15. Maybe some of you mothers who are here and the fathers and the grandparents, you need to discover this secret and use it. Exodus 14, 15, Moses said, The Lord said to Moses, Where do you cry to me? Speak to your children of Israel that they may go forward. You know, in verse number 14, the Lord had told him, the Lord shall fight for you. You shall hold your peace. Mungu You are not going to stay where you are. You are coming out. Cry out. Cry out. Samuel cried out on behalf of Israel. You know, that's the story of Moses, how he cried on behalf of Israel. Even there's a place where he said, let me die. And that you save these people. First Samuel 7 and 8. 
Samuel cried out on behalf of Israel. Is there somebody who's going to cry on behalf of your family? Hello? Is there somebody who's going to take the burden of your father, your mother, your brothers and sisters and bring it before the Lord? Second Chronicles 6 and 19. Solomon cried on behalf of Israel. On behalf of who? Of Israel. Ezekiel 9 and 8. Ezekiel cried out. In the first Kings 17, 22. First Kings 17, 22. Let me read something here. This is powerful. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 17, 22. Um, here is the, the child of a widow. And this child has been brought to Elijah, the Tishbite. When you read in verse number 18, she said to Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come to me, call my sin to remembrance, to slay my son. This woman is mourning because she has a dead son. And they said unto her, Give me your son. He took him out of her bosom, carried him up in a loft, where he abode, he laid him upon his own bed. And he cried to the Lord. What did Elijah do? He cried out to what was the prayer? I want you to see First Kings 17.20. The prayer was very simple. O oh Lord my God, as thou also brought evil upon thy widow, with whom I sojourned by slaying her son, he stretched himself upon the child three times and he cried to the Lord. He said, O oh Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come to him again. Oh Lord God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. You missed the place to say amen. And the Lord heard who? The voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came unto him, and the child revived. What are we learning here, Pastor Made Madewa? Sometimes we don't require long prayers. Huh? Oh God, save this child. Oh God, heal this boy. Huh? You are inside. You don't have time to remember page 29 of your prayer book. What is it you will do? Some people cry out, Jesus! They don't even say beyond that. And you know that they come out. Cry out! Save me! Deliver me! Heal me! Touch me! Why? Hallelujah. It means to cry out. It means to pour out. It means to shout out. <laughs> the early apostles knew how to cry out to God. Um, I want to give you these things and then I'm done. To be fervent in the spirit and to have your desire met. These things will be very key. Hochas a moyo wako na maitachi ya moyo wako. Number one, these are the characteristics of passionate praying. It grows out of the love for God. It comes out of loving God. Out of 
loving God. It grows out of holy desire. Holy desire. God gives it to you as a direct gift. God gives you that desire as a direct gift when there is need. When that desire has been addressed, you'll have a new vision. The result will be a new vision. Otakuta on a Murisa Nugu. Ulukona Zumbri was an Arida Jambo, Bona Squeezia Zumbuki. I said, My brother, I got a new vision. Sister, you mean that man dropped you and you're still standing? Oh, I have a new vision. I'm on a different platform. Can somebody say amen? The results will be gradual. Some of them will deepen your conviction. Conviction deepened. Urgency becomes regular. Urgency becomes regular. And you discover more often you meet with God. More often you meet with who? You, you just don't go into a session of prayer and not coming out with something. You'll have a new vision. Gradually you will deepen. Your conviction about God and prayer will be real. Urgency will be your lifestyle. You'll meet with God and remember, when you meet with God, one has fewer. When you meet with God, that means your answers are met. Your needs are met. Then finally, it becomes a characteristic of your prayer life. Intercession becomes a characteristic. It's you now and God. May I say this as I close? The dynamics of fervency in prayer, you'll, you'll be quickened. The other word for being quickened is to be awakened. You'll be strengthened. But that you are your faith will grow. Now, there are things here I've said, some of them you don't understand. What is the bishop trying to tell us? I'm telling you, this week you have been awakened. This week you have been quickened. You have been made alive. You are being strengthened. You have been strengthened. The Lord bless you. Father, we thank you. We bless you for these teachings, these sessions we have had, sharing the insights into prevailing prayer. May prevailing prayer become our lifestyle. Lord, some of the needs and the challenges we have had, let them be history. Let them be history. May we have a passion for God, a passion to win the lost, a passion to serve God. May we destroy the works of darkness. May we challenge the forces of darkness. May we never remain to be the same again. Lord, transform us. Lord, transform us. Lord, change us. Lord, change us. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Ask for the Lord to change you. Openly, loud and clear, 
ask for God to change you. Lord, change me. Lord, transform me. Lord, revolutionize me. Lord, awaken me. Lord, cause me to be resurrected to a new level. I take the spirit and the grace of prayer. I prevail. I wrestle. And I will come out. I am blessed. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I release your blessing upon my listeners. I declare the Lord God is with them. It is done in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. I will not estate. To encourage you to get the wonderful name of Jesus. For you to discover what is behind this name. What is behind this name. I will not hesitate to tell you your faith must explode. Explosive faith. And you need to spend a little bit of more time in Hebrews 11. I recommend very strongly the Holy Spirit, his personality, and his works. Without the Holy Spirit, without the name of Jesus, without faith that explodes, your prayer life becomes weakened. And then finally, 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 do, practice what you have learned. Do. Practice what you have learned. Do. Practice what you have learned. Let it not just be in the notebook. Use it immediately. The Lord bless you. Sunday service, Deliverance Church, it will be 9 o'clock with Reverend Wilson Mambaleo. We will do an offering and I declare you blessed. I declare you blessed. I declare you blessed. Ladies, you are aware you have a big, big date here. And you have a guest speaker. Spora Wambua is speaking tonight and tomorrow. <clears throat> Goodbye and thank you for coming.